Hello friends, welcome to BMH Learning. In this video, we are gonna discuss about CACO 2 cells permeability assay. First, let's know what are CACO 2 cells. CACO 2 is the human colon epithelial cancer cell line. And the cell line is used as a model of human intestinal absorption of drugs. This model can test a compound suitability for oral dosing, prediction of intestinal permeability and also investigation of drug efflux. Important characteristics of CACO2 cell lines Growth in culture They are cultured as monolayer epithelial cells. CACO2 cells form a tight monolayer growing on a permeable filter support. Differentiation when CACO2 cells are cultured as a monolayer, they differentiate to form tight junctions between cells to serve as a model of passive diffusion of compounds across the monolayer. The differentiation process is a 20 day 1 system in standard culture medium. Morphology The cells show polarity and possess tight junctions and brush borders. Now, the permeability of the compounds can be measured in both directions, that is, apical to basolateral and basolateral to apical. AB corresponds to absorption from intestinal lumen to the circulation. Procedure Cultivation of CACO2 cell monolayers. So, pre worm PBS, complete growth medium, and trypsin or EDTA for 30 minutes in a water bath set at 37 degrees centigrade. The cells are rinsed with 12 ml PBS and then PBS is discarded. Trypsinization of CACO2 cells So, 3 ml of trypsin or EDTA solution is added. We need to rinse the cell properly in trypsin solution. The cells are then incubated at 37 degrees centigrade for 6 to 15 minutes. The incubation time with trypsin should be very short because it's going to affect the cell viability. After this, we knock the sides of the flask in order to detach still adherent cells. Then 7 ml of complete growth medium is added to neutralize the trypsin EDTA solution. Pipe it up and down very gently to separate the cells and while doing so avoid cell clumping. 1 ml of the cell suspension is removed for cell counting and viability measurement. The filter inserts and wells must be wet with complete growth medium for at least 2 minutes. To make them wet volumes are used in this range. For apical 0.5 ml and for vasolateral, it's 1.6 ml. Now keep in mind, one insert has to be cultivated without cells. It's because this is needed for the measurement of the tear blank value. The cell suspension is then prepared, which is required for seeding in complete growth medium. Aspirate the medium in the inserts on which you want to seed the cells. The cells are then seeded into the inserts and we gently shake the plate for even distribution of cells. The filter plate is then placed in an incubator at 37 degrees centigrade and 5% CO2. Now, change the medium 3 hours after seeding to basolateral medium, both in the insert and the well. Again, we need to change the medium the next day so that multilayer formation can be avoided. From here on, the medium must be renewed every other day, that is, three times per week till the end of the cultivation period, which is around 19 to 21 days. The tier values are measured. Background tier may be recorded in wells without cell monolayers and can be subtracted from the row tier values with cells. Next is washing. 
So the cells are washed with HBSS with pH 7.7. Transport the filter plate to transport analysis plate. Then add the test compound to the filter well. Once the buffer and drug has been added, incubate at 37 degrees centigrade and simultaneously set it shaking at 60 rpm on a rotary shaker. Once incubation period is over, remove a fixed volume that is around 50 to 100 microliter directly from the apical and basolateral ends to a clean plate. The analysis is completed using liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry. This was all. Thanks for watching.